Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Nishit Kumar and with me is Aditi Lumba with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses BRICS Business Forum virtually, says India's digital economy to reach $1 trillion mark by 2025. BRICS summit begins tomorrow. Prime Minister Modi to address virtually. 6.1 magnitude earthquake jolts Afghanistan, over 1,000 killed and 1,500 injured. India says it will provide support and assistance to the people of Afghanistan in the hour of need. Maharashtra political crisis deepens. Rebel Shiv Sena leader Eknath Shinde claims support of 40 MLAs. Chief Minister Uddha Thakre offers to step down. Vanij Bhavan, the new premises of Ministry of Commerce and Industry, will be unveiled by Prime Minister tomorrow. Flood situation in Assam improves slightly in Brahmaputra Valley due to better conditions in Kamrup Valley, but remains grim in Barak Valley. And in hockey, match between India and the United States underway in FIH Pro League at Rotterdam in Netherlands. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India supports innovation across every sector including drones, green energy and space. In a virtual address at the BRICS Business Forum, the Prime Minister said that the government expects the Indian economy to grow by 7.5% this year. Today, when the whole world is post-COVID recovery, the focus of the BRICS countries will be very important for once again. For the reasons of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have reformed in Bharat परफॉर्म एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म का मंत्र अपनाया है और इस एप्रोच के परिणाम भारतीय अर्थव्यवस्था के परफॉर्मेंस से स्पष्ट है इस साल हम 7.5 परसेंट ग्रोथ की आशा कर रहे हैं जो हमें फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग मेजर इकोनॉमी बनाता है मिस्टर मोदी आल्सो सेड द वैल्यू ऑफ द इंडियन डिजिटल इकोनॉमी विल रीच 1 ट्रिलियन यूएस डॉलर्स बाय 2025 Highlighting the strength of the Indian economy, he said there is an opportunity to invest 1.5 trillion US dollars under the country's national infrastructure pipeline. The Prime Minister added that India's success is based on technology, late growth with innovations and startups. And even during COVID-19, the government emphasized on ease of living, building infrastructure with PM Gati Shakti and digital transformation and digital economy. भारत की वर्तमान इकोनॉमिक रिकवरी का एक प्रमुख स्तंभ टेक्नोलॉजी लेड ग्रोथ है हम हर सेक्टर में इनोवेशन को सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं महामारी के दौरान भी भारत ने ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस सुधारने के लिए अनेकों प्रयास जारी रखे बिजनेस पर कंप्लायंस बर्डन कम करने के लिए हजारों नियमों में बदलाव किया गया सरकारी पॉलिसीज और प्रोसीजर्स में अधिक पारदर्शिता और स्थिरता लाने के लिए बड़े पैमाने पर काम हो रहा है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड टू डील विद द इकोनॉमिक प्रॉब्लम्स अराइजिंग आउट ऑफ द पैंडमिक इंडिया हैज अडॉप्टेड द मंत्र ऑफ रिफॉर्म परफॉर्म एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म इट सेड द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस अप्रोच आर एविडेंट फ्रॉम द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द इंडियन इकोनॉमी मिस्टर मोदी सेड इन न्यू इंडिया ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव चेंजेस आर टेकिंग प्लेस इन एवरी सेक्टर the prime minister said brics was established with the belief that this group of emerging economies could emerge as engines of global growth he said today when the world is focusing on post covid recovery the role of brics countries will be very important prime minister narendra modi will attend the two day 14th brics summit hosted by china beginning tomorrow the summit will be held in virtual format under the theme of foster high quality brics partnership ushered in a new era for global development Chinese President Xi Jinping will also chair a high-level dialogue on global development with guest countries on the 24th of June. BRICS leaders and leaders of relevant emerging markets and developing countries will attend the high-level dialogue on global development on the 24th of June. During the 14th BRICS summit, deliberations are expected to be held in areas like terrorism, trade, health, traditional medicine, environment, science and technology, innovation, agriculture, technical and vocational education, and training and micro, small and medium enterprises. 
Discussions are also likely to be held on issues like reform of the multilateral system, combating COVID-19 pandemic and global economic recovery. In Afghanistan, over 1,000 people have been killed and 600 other injured following an earthquake of magnitude 6.1 which hit Paktika province this morning. Disaster management officials said the toll is expected to grow as information trickles in from remote mountain villages. Interior Ministry official Salahuddin Ayubi said authorities had launched a rescue operation and helicopters were being used to reach the injured and take in medical supplies and food. Today's quake was the deadliest since 2002. The landlocked country's eastern province of Paktika was the most affected, with reports of significant damage from the areas of Gyan, Nakai, Barmal and Zirak. In Kosh province, the area of Seprai also bore the brunt of the early morning tremors. India has conveyed sympathy and condolences to the victims and their families and to all those impacted by the tragic earthquake in Afghanistan. In a tweet, the External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakhchi said, India shares the grief of the people of Afghanistan and remains committed to provide assistance and support in this hour of need. Amid the deepening political crisis in Maharashtra, Chief Minister and Shiv Sena Supremo Uddhav Thakre today asked the rebel Shiv Sena MLAs to come face to face to tell if they want him to quit from both the CM and party president posts rather than trolling him through media or social media. Speaking to people of the state via Facebook Live this evening, CM Thakre said, A blow by own is what hurts the most. The Chief Minister asserted that under his leadership, the party is marching ahead on the path laid down by late Bala Saheb. Meanwhile, hectic political activities are on in Guwahati amongst rebel Shiv Sena legislators who reached the city this morning. Earlier in the day, rebel Shiv Sena leader Eknath Shinde held a meeting with his fellow legislators. A total of 40 Shiv Sena legislators, as claimed by Mr. Shinde, is camping in Guwahati amidst tight security. Three to four more Shiv Sena MLAs are likely to join them. It is learned that the meeting has discussed future course of action. The rebel leaders are unlikely to join hands with the MVA government. Mr. Shinde asserted that they are the staunch followers of the ideology of Bala Sahib Thakre and committed to follow his path of Hindutva. Shiv Sena, however, had decided to take disciplinary action against those MLAs who accompanied Eknath Shinde to Guwahati and remain absent for today's cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the new premises of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Vanijib Bhavan, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. During the program, Mr. Modi will also launch a new portal, Niryat, National Import Export Record for Yearly Analysis of Trade, which is developed as a one-stop platform for stakeholders to get all necessary information related to India's foreign trade. The Prime Minister will also address the gathering on the occasion. Constructed near India Gate, the Vanijya Bhavan is designed as a smart building which incorporates the principles of sustainable architecture with a special focus on energy saving. It will serve as an integrated and modern office complex that will be used by the two departments under the Ministry Department of Commerce and Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Home Minister Amit Shah will attend the National Conclave of Scheduled and Multi-State Urban Cooperative Banks and Credit Societies on Future Role of Urban Cooperative Credit Sector in New Delhi tomorrow. The conclave will further strengthen the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of Sahikar Se Samriddhi. During the conclave, urban cooperative banks that have completed 100 years of service to society will be felicitated. There are 197 such banks in the country. Urban cooperative banks are among the oldest banking institutions in the country. The banks were managed by a cross-section of people from society that include teachers, lawyers, traders, doctors, engineers, social workers and others for providing banking services to their members. India and Australia today reviewed the existing defence cooperation activities which have been increasing despite challenges of COVID-19 pandemic and discussed ways to enhance further cooperation. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh and visiting Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defence Richard Marlis held a bilateral meeting in New Delhi today. During the meeting, they reviewed the defence and security pillars of the India-Australia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. The two leaders reaffirmed their commitment towards implementation of the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership based on mutual trust and understanding common interests and shared values of democracy and rule of law. They also welcomed the growing diversity and frequency of defence exercises and exchanges between the two countries and undertook to build upon operational engagements through India-Australia Mutual Logistics Support Arrangement. Both the ministers committed 
to give a fillip to the India Australia Joint Working Group JWG on defense research and material cooperation which will meet in Australia later this year this JWG is a crucial mechanism for boosting ties between defense industries the ministers discussed further opportunities for industrial cooperation between India and Australia to increase the resilience of supply chains and deliver capabilities to the respective defense forces both sides also agreed to explore means to grow connections and opportunities between indian and australian defense industrial bases in the meeting they welcomed the plan to commence the landmark general rawat young officer exchange program in the latter half of 2022 the ministers also reviewed strategic challenges and the regional security situation and reaffirmed their shared objective of an open free inclusive prosperous and rules based indo pacific region earlier in the day the deputy prime minister and defense minister of australia visited the national war memorial and paid homage to the war heroes by laying a wreath at the monument he was accorded the ceremonial guard of honor before the bilateral meeting with mr rajnath singh external affairs minister dr s jayashankar will be on a four day visit to kigali in rwanda from today to attend the 26th commonwealth heads of government meeting chogm He will be leading the Indian delegation to the Chogun which had earlier been postponed twice due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The theme of the summit is delivering a common future, connecting, innovating and transforming. During the meeting the leaders of the Commonwealth member states are scheduled to deliberate on issues of global challenges like climate change, food security and health issues. Indian oil has developed an indo solar cooking system Surya Nutan. It collects energy from sun and converts the sun energy into heat through a specially designed heating element. The product is rechargeable and suitable for four persons. While observing the demonstrations of the system Surya Nutan in New Delhi today, Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Hardeep Singh Puri said, "It is a revolutionary step." He said the system has been installed at 60 location for its testing. We are now in the final stages. Intellectual property protection भी मिल गई है. इसको scale up करेंगे. इसका दाम भी कम आएगा. It has some revolutionary features. इसमें कोई battery की ज़रूरत नहीं है. आप normal sunlight को use कर सकते हैं. Rural Development and Panchayati Raj Minister Giriraj Singh said the Ministerial Stage for Housing and Urban Affairs, Kaushal Kishore, was also present on the occasion. In Tripura, Chief Electoral Officer Mr. Kiran Gitte said. All the arrangements are ready for the by-election of four assembly segments of Tripura Legislative Assembly tomorrow. By-election polls are to be held for Agartala, Town Bordwali, Surma and Jubaraj Nagar where 22 candidates are on tray. Addressing a press conference this afternoon Mr. Gitte also appealed to the voters to cast them peacefully. He said a total 189,032 voters will cast votes which includes 93,638 male voters and 95,389 female voters. On part of security arrangements the CEO said that the election commission has created helpline numbers for any kind of assistance for the voters. He said security arrangements have been tightened to maintain the law and order situation during the poll. The Union Public Service Commission UPSC today declared the results of Civil Services Preliminary Examination 2022. Over 13,000 candidates have qualified in the examination which was held on the 5th of this month. Nearly 11.52 lakh people had applied for the examination. The commission has put up a detailed list mentioning roll numbers of candidates who have been declared successful. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 196. 60 crore today health minister said more than 12 lakh 95000 vaccine doses were administered today you're listening to the evening news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on prime minister narendra modi addresses brics business forum virtually says india's digital economy to reach 1 trillion dollar mark by 2025 brics summit begins tomorrow prime minister modi to address virtually 6.1 magnitude earthquake jolts Afghanistan over 1000 killed and 1500 injured India says it will provide support and assistance to the people of Afghanistan in the hour of need Maharashtra political crisis deepens rebel Shiv Sena leader Eknath Shinde claims support of 40 MLAs Chief Minister Uddhav Thackeray offers to step down Vanijay Bhavan the new premises of Ministry of Commerce and Industry will be unveiled by Prime Minister tomorrow 
Flood situation in Assam improved slightly in Brahmaputra Valley due to better conditions in Kamrup Valley but remains grim in Barak Valley. And in hockey match between India and United States underway in FIH Pro League at Rotterdam in Netherlands. For quick news updates from the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख। आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प। और अब तो आप घर, दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग। आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता। बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब इस बार का विषय है इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी और सवाल भेजने की अंतिम तारीख है 22 जून आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास वेलकम बैक यू आर ट्यून्ड टू द इवनिंग न्यूज़ ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विल बी ऑन अ 3 डे विजिट टू जर्मनी एंड यूएई बिगिनिंग ऑन द 26th ऑफ दिस मंथ he will visit Schloss Elmau, Germany, for the G7 summit under the German presidency on the 26th and the 27th of this month. During the summit, he is expected to speak in two sessions that include environment, energy, climate, food security, health, gender equality and democracy. In an effort to strengthen international collaboration on those important issues, other democracies such as Argentina, Indonesia, Senegal and South Africa have also been invited. The G7 countries are Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, the United States and the European Union. On the sidelines of the summit, Mr. Modi will hold bilateral meetings with leaders of some of the participating countries. The invitation to the G7 summit is in keeping with the tradition of strong and close partnership and high-level political contacts between India and Germany. After attending the G7 summit, Prime Minister Modi will be travelling to the United Arab Emirates on the 28th of this month to pay his personal condolences on the passing away of the former UAE President Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He will also take the opportunity to congratulate Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on his election as the new President of the UAE and ruler of Abu Dhabi. The Prime Minister will depart from UAE the same night. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. Twenty second of June, nineteen hundred, is the birth anniversary of freedom fighter Ganesh Ghosh. His family hails from Chittagong, now in Bangladesh. Ganesh Ghosh was an active member of the Chittagong Jugantar Party. He participated in the Chittagong Armory Raid, along with Surya Sen and other revolutionaries on 18th of April 1930. He was later arrested by the police and after the trial, Ganesh Ghosh was deported to the cellular jail in Port Blair in 1932. He remained in the cellular jail for 14 years. After his release from jail in 1946, he became a leader of the Communist Party. He was elected to the West Bengal Legislative Assembly in 1952, 1957 and 1962 as a Communist Party of India candidate from Belagatia. He also served as a member of the 4th Lok Sabha in 1967. Ganesh Ghosh continued to work for the nation till his last breath. We salute the brave nationalists. Also 
on 22nd of June 1897. The Tarpaker brothers shot the British Plague Commissioner W. C. Rand. The brothers, namely Damodar Hari, Balakrishna Hari, Vasudeva Hari, belonged to Chinchwad in the city of Pune, India. When the bubonic plague hit India in 1896-97, the government had set up a special plague committee for managing the pandemic. whose commissioner was Walter Charles Rand. Senapati Rand Bedarkar, Lokan Vara Zulum Atyachar, Dushtani Tisa Hota Sarakar Ji. Dushtani Tisa Hota Sarakar Ji. Commissioner Rand took barbaric steps in the name of preventive measures. Troops were brought in to deal with the emergency. The measures employed included entry into private houses, stripping and examination of occupants including women by british officers in public evacuations to hospitals and segregation camps he even refused to pay heed to religious sentiment and enter temples and mosques these measures were considered oppressive by the populace of pune and complaints were ignored by rand thus to put an end to the injustice borne by the people of pune the chapikar brothers decided to take revenge damodara pahila krantikari ladaya ji karto taiyari marda ji marda nagi kari haji ji ji marda ji marda nagi kari on the occasion of the diamond jubilee of the coronation of queen victoria on 22nd of june 1897 rand and his military escort lieutenant iest was shot by the chapikar brothers iest died on the spot and rand died of his wounds on 3rd of july the chapikar brothers and their two supporters were charged with the murders all three brothers were found guilty and hanged air news salutes the brave sons of the soil we also remember freedom fighters mam raj and ram swarup who belonged to district bhivani of haryana They joined the British Indian Army but resigned after some time and took part in Kisan activities from 1931 to 1935. Jo desh pe mar mit gaye wo to desh diwane the aur jinhone jhanda pheraya tha They were involved in an attack on the British police. They were also involved in the murder of an informer of the Nawab. They remained underground for some time, reached Ambala cantonment and stayed there with some soldiers from their villages. Finally, they were arrested in June 1937 and sent to Luharu Fort and charged with murder and dacoity. Mam Raj and Ram Swarup were hanged on 22nd of June 1938. AIR News salutes the brave sons of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. In Lee Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh, RSS senior leader Indresh Kumar said, the 26th Sindhu Darshan Yatra will begin from Thursday with welcoming of the yatris. He spoke to the AIR correspondent and later today he said the yatris from across the country would witness the speedy development in Ladakh after becoming a union territory. Indresh Kumar said Jagat Guru Shankaracharya of Bhadrak Ashram of Joshi Math Shri Shri 1008 Vasudevanand ji will be chief guest at the opening of 26 Hindu Darshan in Leh. He said government of India is releasing a special commemorative stamp on the occasion of 26 Hindu Darshan Yatra. The Sensex and the Nifty today plunged more than 1%. Both stock indices fell amid negative global cues, a report from the business desk. The Sensex declined 710 points or 1.35% to end at 51,823. Nifty plunged 226 points or 1.4% to finish at 15,413. In the forex market, the rupee weakened 30 paise against the US dollar. The domestic currency closed at 78 rupees and 38 paise against the American unit. Gold prices rose 185 rupees at multi commodity exchange for August contracts. The precious metal was trading at 50,945 rupees per 10 gram. 
Japan and oil prices plunged around 4.5%. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading at $109.60 per barrel. Lalema Aneja Dang, AIR News. In cricket, Mumbai were 248 for 5 at Stumps on day 1 of the Ranji Trophy final against Madhya Pradesh at M. Chinnaswamy Stadium today. After electing to bat first, Mumbai began well with opener Yasashwi Jaiswal and Prithvi Shaw giving a solid start to the innings. Jaiswal was out after scoring 78 runs while Shaw made 47. For Madhya Pradesh, Saranj Jain and Anubhav Agrawal took two wickets each. The second match of the final double header between India and the United States in the FIH Pro League 2021-22 is underway at the Hezelaver Stadium in Rotterdam, Netherlands. Both the teams made attacks and counter-attacks right from the beginning of the game. However, both the teams failed to score till half the time. In Jammu and Kashmir, incessant rainfall across the Union Territory has forced the authorities in many districts to suspend school classes up to Standard 12. A correspondent reports that in view of very heavy rains in Riyasi, Ramban, Kishwar and Doda districts, the classes in all educational institutions, including primary, middle, high and higher secondary schools of these districts, shall remain suspended today. In view of heavy rains and overflowing of nalas at several places across all the above districts, the district administration of these districts ordered closure of all the educational institutions up to 12th standard. Besides, the district administrations of Doda, Kishwar and Ramban districts have issued advisory to general public of the district not to venture out unnecessarily near the river Chenab and other nalas as there may be increase in water level. In Assam, the flood situation improved slightly in Brahmaputra Valley due to better weather conditions and only Brahmaputra and Kopili rivers are flowing above danger level. And in news just in, Secretary Department of Food and Public Distribution Sudhan Shupande has said that timely government interventions on multiple front have led to falling trend in edible oil prices and major edible oil brands have cut prices by 10 to 15 rupees. He said surprise inspections conducted by the department to check illegal stocking of edible oil had the desired impact. Mr. Panda said the wholesale prices and retail prices of Vanaspati, soybean oil, sunflower oil and RBD palm oil have decreased over the week. He said with the edible oil prices beginning to show a downward trend and are set to decline further, the Indian consumers can expect to pay less for their edible oils. Mr. Panda said the falling edible oil prices will help in cooling the inflation as well. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi is expected to have strong surface winds during daytime. The minimum temperature will be around 25 degrees while the maximum will be 36 degrees. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. The minimum temperature will be 24 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be 30 degrees. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature will be 27 degrees Celsius and the maximum 33 degrees. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature will be 26 degrees, maximum around 32 degrees. Srinagar, Muzaffarabad and Jammu will have mainly clear sky. Leh and Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. Hyderabad, Bengaluru and Thiruvananthapuram will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In the northeast, Guwahati, Imphal and Aizol will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle, while Shillong, Itanagar and Gangtok will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses BRICS Business Forum virtually, says India's digital economy to reach $1 trillion mark by 2025. BRICS summit begins tomorrow. Prime Minister Modi to address virtually. 6.1 magnitude earthquake jolts Afghanistan, over 1,000 killed and 1,500 injured. India says it will provide support and assistance to the people of Afghanistan in the hour of need. Maharashtra political crisis deepens. Rebel Shiv Sena leader Eknath Shinde claims support of 40 MLAs. Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre offers to step down. Vanidji Bhavan, the new premises of Ministry of Commerce and Industry, will be unveiled by Prime Minister tomorrow. Flood situation in Assam improves slightly in Brahmaputra Valley due to better conditions in Kamrup Valley but remains grim in Barag Valley. And in hockey, match between India and the United States underway in FIH Pro League at Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night. <laughs>